it's uh, past or a break. So we have a nice uh, service ready for you today. Uh, before we start, I would like to um, invite all of you to stay after church and help turn this uh, sanctuary into a cave because tomorrow we begin Bible school at uh, 6.15 tomorrow night and we have to have it all decorated and ready to go and it'll be a lot of fun. So if you can stay and help, that'd be wonderful. The more hands we have, the less time it'll take. Okay, uh, and before we begin, I have a presentation to make today. <coughs> We uh, the women choose a woman in our church who has just done all kinds of wonderful things for the church, and the woman we've chosen today really has, is always ready to volunteer. She works really hard. Um, always uh, Johnny on the spot, uh, ready to help people that need help coming and going and getting in the door and getting out and uh, always willing to volunteer for things like, um, oh, it helps with a rummage sale, with kids programs, Bible school, when we did parents night out. And also she does a lot of behind the scene things that we don't even see, but she's active. and. Um, um, always here early in the morning. So I would like to present, oh, this mission pin, by the way, is um, in her honor, goes, it's like $40 that goes to a mission project in her honor. And our recipient today is Beth Lenz. <laughs> And we, we hope that God will forgive us because Beth comes to our meetings and we had to kind of do it behind the scenes and we had to lie and tell her we weren't doing it this year. So we hope we're forgiven for that. <laughs> of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love. I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand over my body to feel good about what I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't speak in its own advantage. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustice. But it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will be brought to an end. As for tongues, they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, reason like a child, think like a child. But now I have become a man. I put an end to childish things. Now we see a reflection in a mirror. Then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been completely known. Now faith, hope, and love remain. These three things. And the greatest of these is love. So ends the reading of God's holy word. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
that on there. Let's get turn on you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on now? Okay, thank you. Um, for anyone that's new here, my name is Carol, and um, I'm um, a representative of the laity doing service today, so uh, doing the sermon. So um, thank you for being here with us and for everybody that showed up and challenged maybe the parts of you that felt you wanted to do something else this morning. So... Um, Um, I'm going to start by reading the greatest commandment from Mark 28 through 30. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. <laughs> Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Throughout my life, um, I have encountered souls who were not Christian, and I struggled with the belief that only believers in Jesus could make it to heaven. Not only that, but I thought that I was expected to be from, free from committing a sin. Jesus has always been my inspiration, but I felt unworthy of his love. I judged myself because I discovered that I sinned through anger, fear, jealousy, resentment, and impatience. Do you remember the Inside Out video sermon series that we did a few weeks ago? When Joy supported Riley, when she felt her core memories of anger, fear, disgust, and sadness, I recognized my fear in Riley. Joy supported Riley to be happy as she operates alongside fellow emotions, just as God supports us. And to me, this was my physical and emotional journey to renewal. In April, as I was standing before the cross at the sanctuary at Inspiration Hills near Canton, Iowa, during my walk to Emmaus, which is a 72-hour um, journey, inner journey, to discover yourself and to hopefully feel the presence of God and Jesus and what they've done for us in our life and what they are doing for us every day. I experienced God's unconditional love. I felt a shimmering glow of, glow of light emanating from the cross and going deeply into my heart. In that moment, I knew that my accepting the love that Jesus and God have for me is all that I need to be included in the fold of souls who will experience an afterlife filled with unconditional love. This experience has opened me in new ways to understand what it means to be the hands and feet of God. Before I thought, what difference could I make in life? Now I recognize that reaching out to others with a love offering is what it means to be a follower of Christ. Jesus is the only person who has or will walk the earth without sin. God knows my sins and loves me for striving to do better. And that is all that he asks of me. From my journal, April 16, 2016, during my walk to Emmaus, I gave my brokenness to God regarding the frightened part of my personality that emotionally distanced me from others by putting up energetic walls over my heart. What I recognized recently is that since giving my wall to God, that a frightened part of my personality now creates numbness in the core of my body, which 
runs down the center of my body. When I scan this, I feel no pain or no joy. Under the feeling of numbness and creating a wall is a deep, intense burning, pain in my heart that spreads across my chest. My throat feels restricted and throbs, and I am grateful for this recognition. You might ask, how can I feel grateful for this recognition? I have always felt that I am an experiential learner. What is more new to me is that with God's support, I am more aware to recognize the parts of my personality that creates distance with others, even blows them off through judgment and blame. This is a different way for me to look at life and to challenge the parts of me that does not lo see love in every person or situation that I encounter. As the serenity prayer reminds me, God grant me acceptance for things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and grant me the wisdom to know the difference. There are a lot of situations that I cannot change, and for me that means, what can I change in myself, or what can I learn about myself, so that I do not react? The word react actually means repeating the same action as I always do, thinking that this time there will be a different, thus loving outcome. So I try to respond instead of react. And each of you were given um, a copy of the Authentic Power Guidelines. And um, <clears throat> this is what I follow as I'm checking in with the pain that is active in the core of my body. I do feel that this pain is God's physical message for me to recognize that in that moment I am experiencing fear and I do not want to react from that space. I can challenge what I have done in the past and set my intention to act from a healthy, loving place. Example, <clears throat> do you ever have thoughts? How dare that driver cut me off? Or, if the checkout person would just hurry up, doesn't she know that I'm in a hurry? Okay, when I want to change someone else so that I feel better, how does that work for me? Not too well. <laughs> what I am recognizing is that the person I am judging or the situation that I am judging, as it said in 1 Corinthians, is just a mirror to a fear that I have in me. The only I have the power to make a loving choice by changing my perspective to what can I learn about myself in this situation. Scan the pain in the core of my body, hear what my thoughts are, and they're usually not very kind thoughts, they're thoughts of judgment and anger. and then making a healthy choice to respond from the most loving space I can at that moment. Remembering that every interaction that I have is a mirror to the loving parts of my personality, and every interaction that I have is a mirror to the frightened parts of my personality, is humbling to me and gives me the courage to change myself so that my world and interactions reflects to me the love that God meant for us to live in when he chose to love, when we chose to love and honor him. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 11 through 13. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. And that I know now is partial and incomplete. But when I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. These three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. 
Amen. Now the sermon is over. 